Hi, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes just to explain the GFC, why it's not over, and uh, austerity. Um, I get a few questions about that, and um, I just thought well, maybe I'll just make a little clip just to explain it in real simple terms over the next few minutes. Okay, so basically, how it all started was you had banks, and the banks were a bit innovative, maybe over innovative, you might say. And they created financial products, which they called subprime. And why was it subprime? Because they were lending it at very low rates to people who basically couldn't afford it. And there'd be a period, if you like, a horizon where at some point in the future, the actual real rates or the, the rates that they would have to pay would trigger in. In any case, what they did was they basically created some loan products which they sold to people who fundamentally in the long term, so they created long term loan products and sold them on a short term basis to people who couldn't afford them. And what that did was basically they packaged up the loan products and sold them as assets. These are called derivatives. What they did was they basically said, okay, we've, we've got all these loan products and we'll sell them off as, as assets uh, for people to invest in. So in effect, they're, they're investing in the loan products that have been created here. Um, and what they did then was they sold those assets to corporations, general public, investors. But because fundamentally, down here, They've sold a long-term product, which is like a home loan, on a short-term basis. They've actually created a house of cards, but in the meantime, they've actually inflated assets. And because they've inflated asset prices, people um, have borrowed on those assets to again spend in the marketplace. So when the subprime was triggered, or when the dates were triggered where people actually had to pay the long-term loan rates, they found out they actually couldn't afford the long-term loan rates. So in effect, these subprime products we're worth nothing. However, we've sold those, long t those uh, subprime products as assets. So in effect, these were worth nothing. So these were worth nothing, these were worth nothing, and the people holding the assets had lost their investment. So who came to the rescue? So what happened there, so the corporations were in a lot of trouble because of the downturn in the economy. Some banks, as you remember, were in a lot of trouble because they're holding on to a lot of these derivative assets. So what happened? The taxpayer and the government came to the rescue and they bailed out these guys and some of these guys. So what they've done is the government, is the government which is uh, already in a lot of debt, has taken on more debt to fund failing entities or entities that uh, have made today decisions. Okay, so that's basically how it all happened, how it all began. But let me explain to you how capitalism is supposed to work. Capitalism is supposed to work in very simple terms. I'm trying to keep this very simple. So what you have is you have shareholders. And the shareholders invest in corporations. And you also have banks, right? So shareholders invest in corporations to get the corporation going um, because they've got a particular marketplace or product which they're selling very well and doing well. And the corporation, because they're doing so well, they want to leverage and maximise their uh, returns. So they actually go to banks a lot of time and leverage the funds available to them to increase their profitability. So the banks lend their money. But what happens though is that if management here gets it all wrong, for some reason, makes some poor decisions, they lose their jobs, they lose their money, they lose their assets. But their assets are limited to how much money they've put in in terms of uh, the shares they've paid for. Let's say if they paid $4 a share, they've lost that $4 per share that they've put in. Now the difference with governments is that you have a taxpayer,
you have government and you have banks. Now the difference is, okay, well the government, the taxpayer funds the government. The government, again, wants to improve its services offering to the public, so it can get some funding from banks. What happens though, is it's a little bit, it's a little bit different with governments. You know, they've got politicians, there's politicians, and there's legislation. So what happens here is that uh, if you, if the government overextends, and the banks have, um, if you like, lent too much fundamentally, and the, and the government actually can't pay based on its uh, current income, what the government can do is it can legislate for the taxpayer to pay more. It can't happen here. So fundamentally that's what austerity is. Um, although these guys, as, 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 much as, you want to, as much as you want to perhaps avoid saying it, um, they create the problem with their subprime loans and their derivative products aren't wearing the losses that they perhaps should be. People here, if they were here, they'll lose their jobs. They haven't lost their jobs, they're still there, most of them. And the taxpayer, you, you're paying more for your, uh, if you like, uh, unengagement, or not being engaged in, in, in the process. So you're paying the price of ignorance here. Anyhow, so we're all paying for uh, some bad decisions here, here, and some ignorance here. But um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think the solutions are. How, how should we actually solve this problem? Um, should we start again? Is Iceland a model uh, for, for uh, if you like, um, dealing with the GFC? Nobody talks about that, do they? Um, so, interesting, interested to hear your thoughts. Write some comments below. Just made it nice and simple for you to understand. Thanks.